Do you think there has ever been an airplane that made the world's biggest aviation giant Boeing feel threatened? The truth is there has, but what's remarkable is that it wasn't an Airbus, nor an Embraer Russian or Chinese aircraft. It's the story of Bombardier and its C-Series jets. So, why did this airplane pose such a threat to Boeing? And in the seemingly hopeless struggle to survive Boeing's attempts to crush it, how did Bombardier and the plane manage to make a comeback? Let's dive into this fascinating story. The C-Series was actually a statement, a direct challenge to the decades-old order of the aviation world. It was a machine designed to fill a gap that the industry giants had neglected, a combination of cutting-edge technology and undeniable performance. Indeed, the birth of the C-Series wasn't a sudden idea. It was the inevitable result of survival needs and a sharp vision of the market. Bombardier realized that for years, the 100 to 150 seat segment had been overlooked or poorly served. The two giants, Boeing and Airbus, too focused on their larger wide body and narrow body aircraft, only served this market with downsized versions of their main models like the A320 and 737. These shrunken aircraft, even with higher performance engines, still carried excess weight and oversized wings for the actual demand. The result was unusually high operating costs and wasted fuel, a huge efficiency gap airlines had quietly accepted for decades. Bombardier saw a golden opportunity here. Rather than following the conventional path of incremental improvements, they chose to reinvent the wheel from scratch. This allowed their engineers to design an aircraft fully optimized around the groundbreaking Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan GTF engines. The difference was fundamental instead of attaching new engines to an old frame, they built a new frame around the new engines. The result was a near-perfect machine, the C-Series. The aircraft delivered a 20% reduction in fuel consumption per seat and a 15% lower operating cost compared to competitors. This wasn't a minor upgrade, it was a generational leap in technology. Beyond efficiency, the C-Series incorporated advanced features usually reserved for larger, expensive, wide-body, aircraft, lightweight composite materials, advanced aerodynamics, and an all-new fly-by-wire flight control system. The combination made for a much quieter cabin, four times less noise during takeoff and landing, with carbon dioxide emissions down 20% and nitrogen oxide emissions cut by 50%. Thanks to these, the passenger experience was elevated as well. A wider cabin layout 2-3, instead of the typical 3-3, larger windows and more comfortable overhead storage transformed the onboard environment. All these elements made the C-Series the perfect tool for the perfect mission, a product competitive not just on price, but on value and technology. Yet, precisely because it was so superior, the C-Series faced unexpected threats lurking around the corner. Breakthrough innovation often comes with a devastating price, a cost so steep that it not only drove Bombardier to the edge of bankruptcy, but also turned the company into a target under siege. From the start, the C-Series success sent shockwaves across the entire aviation world. Its revolutionary performance forced Airbus to fast-track the A320neo program to defend its market share. The mere existence of the C-Series was enough to shift global strategic dynamics long before it carried a single passenger. The threat was no longer abstract. It had become a concrete factor in every airline's cost model. Yet the program soon faced its own unexpected turbulence. Building an all-new aircraft from the ground up proved a Herculean challenge. The project ran over two and a half years late and overshot its budget by $2.2 billion, pushing total development costs beyond $5.4 billion. For a company of Bombardier's modest scale and limited resources, that figure was crushing almost impossible to sustain. Then came the financial aftershocks. Bombardier posted a staggering 4.1 billion loss, slashed thousands of jobs, canceled multiple projects, and took on nearly 9 billion in debt. The company hovered on the brink of collapse, surviving only through emergency aid from the Canadian government and the province of Quebec. But that very lifeline became a double-edged sword-proof in the eyes of rivals of unfair state subsidies. Airbus, and especially Boeing, seized on this weakness, amplifying doubts about Bombardier's stability and the legitimacy of the C-Series program. The resulting uncertainty scared off potential buyers, delaying or even canceling orders amid fears of political and financial risk. 
Despite its technological brilliance, the C-Series found itself trapped in a spiral of skepticism and financial turmoil. Just as Bombardier was struggling to escape its financial crisis, a miracle happened. On April 20th, 16 Delta Airlines, one of the most respected carriers in the world, placed an order for 75 CS100s with options for 50 more. This wasn't just a contract, it was the biggest victory in Bombardier's history and the most prestigious validation of the C-Series technology. But that very triumph became the final straw, the event that triggered full-scale alarm at Boeing's headquarters in Seattle. To win Delta's business, Bombardier had sold the jets at a steep loss, just $19.6 million per aircraft, roughly 41% below the actual production cost. This move combined with previous evidence of government subsidies gave Boeing the perfect excuse to strike. The U.S. maker reacted ferociously, launching a brutal legal campaign to crush the C-Series. The company accused Bombardier of dumping selling below cost and of receiving illegal state aid from Canada, causing serious harm to Boeing's ability to sell its 737 aircraft. In the details, Boeing filed complaints with the U.S. Department of Commerce and the U.S. International Trade Commission. Initially, the U.S. aerospace giant won. The U.S. government issued a shocking decision, virtually a commercial death sentence, a 300% import tariff on any C-Series aircraft sold in the United States. The ruling made it economically impossible to sell the C-Series in the world's largest aviation market. Boeing's strike was tactically flawless. It not only blocked the aircraft from gaining market share, but also pushed Bombardier once again to the brink of collapse, cutting off any chance of attracting new investors. The campaign revealed Boeing's true intention to kill the C-Series before it could grow up, protecting the dominance of its 737 MAX empire at all costs. Cornered by a crushing 300% tariff and unbearable financial pressure, Bombardier was forced to search for a desperate way out. And in one of the most dramatic strategic moves in aviation history, they turned to an old rival Airbus. Just weeks after the tariff ruling a historic deal was announced, Airbus would acquire 50.01% of the C-Series program. But you know what is the astonishing part? The price was just one Canadian dollar. Airbus paid no cash, assumed no existing debt, and Bombardier even had to contribute an additional $350 million to keep the program running for another year. Yet Boeing's rival held a priceless strategic card. The company pledged to establish a second C-Series assembly line in Mobile, Alabama, USA, that was the checkmate move. By producing the aircraft on U.S. soil, the C-Series instantly avoided the 300% import tariff since it would now be classified as a domestically built product. Overnight, Boeing's entire costly and aggressive legal offensive was rendered meaningless. The threat from the U.S. maker was no longer a matter of legal or trade disputes. It had become a battle of pure technology. And Airbus, with its vast resources, was fully prepared for that fight. On January 20th, 18, the drama reached its peak. The U.S. International Trade Commission unexpectedly dismissed the U.S. manufacturer's claims entirely ruling that Boeing had suffered no real harm because it had never even competed for the Delta order in the first place. The U.S. maker simply had no aircraft in that seating category. The lawsuit that had forced Bombardier to sell its soul to Airbus turned out to rest on a legally fragile foundation. Under Airbus's leadership, the aircraft was reborn with a new name, the Airbus A220. In Airbus's hands, the A220 broke free from Bombardier's shadow to become one of the most remarkable success stories in modern aviation and the clearest proof of the brilliance of its original design. Almost immediately, orders skyrocketed from just 402 under Bombardier to more than 9 and 41 within a few short years. The number keeps climbing, reflecting the market's growing appetite for the aircraft's efficiency and comfort. Major airlines around the world could no longer ignore the A220. Orders poured in from big names such as JetBlue, which chose the A220 to replace part of its aging Embraer E190 fleet Air France KLM to replace the A318 and A319 Qantas, and perhaps most significantly, Delta Airlines, the very airline Boeing had so desperately tried to shield from the C-Series. Airbus now aims to produce 14 aircraft per month by 2026, making the A220 an indispensable part of its product lineup perfectly filling the gap below the A320neo. 
But this is where the real threat to the U.S. aerospace giant begins. The largest current variant, the A2-2300, typically seating 130 to 150 passengers, directly threatens the lower end of the 737 MAX 7 segment. And this threat isn't just about fuel efficiency, it's about passenger experience. With a 2-3 seating layout, 5 seats per row, versus the 3-3 of the MAX 6 seats, the A220 offers wider seats, about 4-5 to five centimeter more, a wider aisle and larger overhead bins, creating what passengers describe as a wide body feel on a narrow body jet. This is a competitive edge Boeing simply cannot replicate without completely redesigning the 737's fuselage, a nearly impossible task given the long-standing structural constraints of the 737 platform. Moreover, the A220 has also proven its ability to open new long point-to-point -point routes, such as short transcontinental flights in North America, that older, less efficient aircraft cannot serve profitably, creating new value and network expansion opportunities for airlines. However, the most serious and strategically dangerous threat to Boeing lies in the stretched variant now under consideration, the A2-2500. If Airbus officially launches this model, it could carry 160 to 180 passengers, depending on configuration landing squarely in the sweet spot of the 737 MAX 8 and A320neo, which is Boeing's most crucial and profitable market segment. This is where the U.S. aerospace giant sells the most aircraft and what it must protect at all costs. With its GTF engines composite materials and aerodynamic refinements inherited from the C-Series version, 500 is projected to deliver 5 to 7% lower seat mile costs than the 737 MAX 8 while still maintaining a premium cabin experience. In other words, Airbus could offer airlines a jet that's both more efficient and more comfortable on the world's most common routes. For Boeing, responding to version 500 would mean either investing tens of billions of dollars in an all-new narrowbody program, which is NSA. New Small Airplane a project fraught with enormous risk and uncertainty, or watching its market share steadily erode. At present, the U.S. maker has no direct response to the A2-2500 that doesn't involve developing an entirely new aircraft from scratch. Meanwhile, Boeing has paid a heavy price for its aggressive campaign and ultimate failure. Instead of eliminating its rival, it inadvertently created a far stronger one backed by Airbus's virtually limitless financial and marketing power. Boeing's biggest loss was surrendering the 100 to 150 seat market where it now has no competitive aircraft. It's four, $2 billion partnership plan with Embraer intended to acquire Embraer's commercial jet division and build a counterweight to the A220 collapsed in 2020. Coming right after its legal defeat to Airbus, the breakdown of this deal left Airbus's rival completely checkmated in the regional and small narrowbody segments. Today, Boeing's biggest rival holds a commanding strategic advantage with a seamless narrowbody family stretching from the A220 all the way up to the A321 XLR. The U.S. manufacturer once set out to destroy the C-Series, but in the end, it was Boeing itself that ensured its survival stronger sleeker and now carrying the name of its greatest rival. The story of the C-Series now, the A220 is a true epic of resilience and a powerful lesson in business strategy. A jet once destined to die under financial pressure and the crushing force of a larger rival is now soaring higher than ever. In the end, technological excellence triumphed over corporate aggression. So what do you think? Where did Boeing truly go wrong? And does the A220 really pose a threat to them? As always, thank you for flying with us and may your journeys be safe and exciting.